A man wins an Emmy, he becomes preeminent. He has his certain enthusiasms. Enthusiasms. <laughs> now, can anybody guess what my enthusiasms are? What it is that brings me great joy? Shirts with loud prints. <laughs> <laughs> Giving jobs to people named Wayans. <laughs> Baseball, the great American pastime. You see, much like producing an award-winning comedy variety series, it's a team effort. A man writes a sketch with setups, punchlines, follow-ups. The cast gets laughs. We all get laughs. But what happens if a guy writes a self-indulgent sketch? What do we get then, eh? Uh, nothing. Nothing. You see, sometimes a man steps up to a typewriter thinking of themselves, trying to hit a home run, but the team gets nothing. Now that was merely a demonstration. You see, even though we've won an Emmy, I don't want anybody resting on their laurels. You got that? Good. Then let's get this show started with some enthusiasm. Okay. Well, Robin, the last time you were here, you picked a man to go out with. Now you're back to tell us how it went. Let's say hello to Mike Tyson. Hello, Michael. Hi, Michael. Hi, Robin. How you doing, Chuck? Hi there, Mike. How are you? Well, I gotta say, I'm really ecstatic to be here. then. Robin, tell us how the date started. Well, at first I called Michael, and of course things didn't go very well because he's just a boxer from Brooklyn, and of course I was a Harvard medical student. <laughs> what about you, Mike? What did you think of Robin? Oh, well, Chuck, when I first saw Robin, I was ecstatic. I mean, she had this she had this really tight dress on, you know, the kind with the push-up bra, and the breasts were like popping right out, like hitting me right in the eye, you know? And as soon as I saw him, Chuck, I said, wow, I'm in love, you know? Sounds like you two really hit it off. So where'd you go first? Well, first, Chuck, we went to this lovely little jewelry store where I allowed Michael to purchase me a very lovely ruby, diamond, and sapphire collection and a matching car. Sounds nice. Did you give Mike anything? Lithium. It, ma- it made me feel really ecstatic, Chuck. Uh-huh. Yes, uh-huh. we know, Michael. We know. So, where'd you go next? Well, then we went to the most beautiful little wedding chapel where my mother was waiting with the justice of the peace, and we got married. Thank you very much. Mike, what did you think of Robin's mother? Well, I got to be honest, Chuck, I wasn't too ecstatic. <laughs> you know, I looked at her mom, the first thing I thought was, wow, this lady really needs a hair weave. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sorry, Robin, I'm, I'm really sorry, her darling, but your mom's head, her forehead is just way too big. big she just has a little, too little hair to cover it, Same. you know? But I tell you something, though, what really separates Robin from her mom is class. Because the Franks would still bother me because I had a boiled egg, too. And I kind of cut one in the car, you know? And her mom made a big stink out of it. <laughs> Ron, we're almost out of time. Tell us about the rest of the day. Well, Charles, after the bank, the lithium began to wear off, and Michael went a little wild. Oh, Stay come here, on, Michael. Robin. What happened, Mike? Oh, well, well, Chuck, it was really simple. It was quite innocent. You know, I was in the parking lot picking up the car. I'm waiting on Robin and her mom. And I see this girl. She has a really nice butt. So I walk over. I go, hi, my name is Mike. And then I shove my tongue down her throat, you know. 
And this guy comes over and goes, hey, that's my mother. So I punch him in his gut, you know, and he started making little warming noises. It was pretty funny. He was like, oh, God, I'm bleeding internally. It was pretty funny, you know. And it reminded me of the Bonecrusher Smith fight where I hit him in his third rib and then tried to push his nose up in his brain, you know. And I came over with a rib. Whoa, 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 bang, bang. Down. Bing. Wow, that was quite a date. <laughs> Let's see who our audience picked for you. Was it Mike? John Kennedy Jr. Or Donald Trump? They picked Mike by 41%. So if you two would like to go out again, ultimately, Mike will pay for it. Well, there is a lovely little fur salon I'd like to go to. Michael, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> what about you, Michael? <laughs> oh, I, I guess it's all right, Robin. <laughs> well, be sure to come back and tell us about it. Hey, Mike, maybe I'll see you on Scrabble sometime. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Hey, ecstatic. E X K I T. <laughs> Are you going to tell him he's wrong? <laughs> well, that's it, folks. I'm Chuck Woolery. Until next time, may all your dates be a matter of public record. It's the Arsenio Hall Show, starring Arsenio Hall. And here's Eddie Murphy's best friend, and don't you forget it, Arsenio I couldn't begin the show without introducing a very good friend of mine. Stopped in tonight. We we're hanging out at the China Club last night. A real party animal. Won't you please give it up for my main man, Pope John Paul. <laughs> We got a great show. So, with no more delay, let's get busy! Yeah. Oh. Oh, now, I'd like to introduce my first guest. A very, very special man. Very talented. He's just written a book. He's in a new film. And running for his fourth term as mayor of Washington, D.C., would you please give it up for a very good friend of mine, Marion Barry. <laughs> Get right into it. Now, you're in the press a lot lately. You have beautiful women inviting you to hotels. People following you everywhere you go. What's it like to be a sex symbol? Uh, I don't think you understand, Arsenio. I don't consider myself a sex symbol. I do consider myself a man who's been wrongly accused of a crime. And I'm here tonight to clear my name. All charges against me are false. There's been no proof of any wrongdoing on my part. 
<laughs> hey, you, wake up! <laughs> yes. So, I haven't read it, but my people tell me you've written a book. Uh, well, I didn't write a book. I was booked. <laughs> on possession of an illegal substance. But that's not the image I'd like to portray here tonight. I'm about the business of government. Yes. Uh, can we talk about my re-election campaign already? Oh, Eddie's here? I said already. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. I get a little confused because you know Eddie is my best friend. <laughs> And to all the white people out there who don't know, Eddie Murphy is only the biggest movie star in the world. <laughs> and I know the black people saying out there going, I know who Eddie Murphy is. I see Eddie Murphy on TV. Say, 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 say. Oh, boy. So, where will you be appearing next? Uh, well, this Friday I'll be appearing in front of the grand jury. <laughs> Nothing. I just like to do that after every third question. So, I understand you're in a new film. Uh, now wait, no. See, they told me you wasn't supposed to ask me about that. Ah, uh, brother. No disrespect to Morgan Freeman or Denzel Washington, but brother, I hear you are smoking. Wait, no. I'd rather yeah. not talk about that. Right Sandy, now. do we have a clip? I've got it right here, Sam. Kick it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm the man. I'm the man walking in DC. Strive to be the best you can be. <laughs> Michael Wolf, take us home with some of that nasty booger nose funk. <laughs> On Fox this fall, a principal breathes new life into a failing beauty school in the uplifting miniseries, Lean On Me Beautiful. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joe Clark. I am your new principal. Now, when I point to you, I want you to line up. You, 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 and you, and you. Line up now. Expeditiously. <laughs> Now I want all of you to take a good look at them. Take a good look at these mutants. <laughs> these are the ugliest kids in the class. They have no place here. I want you all to go home to your ugly parents right now. Get on out of here. Hurry up, move on. You too, Buzzy. This is an outrage. You can't talk to my students this way. I'm going to the school superintendent. Well, go on then. And let the door hit you in the big putty butt. Why, I never. I bet you have not. <laughs> Ma, do you know what they say about you out there? Huh? Greasehead, do you know what they say about you? <laughs> they say that the reason you're in a beauty school is because you're too stupid to go to a regular school. I happen to think they're right. But when I'm through with you, you'll be the smartest dumb people out there. <laughs> what do you want, ugly? I don't want to go. <laughs> Come with me, boy. Hey! Now, what makes you think you can be a beautician? Huh? What makes you think you can give beauty tips to somebody? Look at yourself. You're ugly, boy. Is your parents ugly? Yeah. Well, you're gonna grow up to look just like them. If you got ugly parents, you might as well just jump out the window. You use chemicals in your hair? No. Do you use chemicals in your hair? Yeah. Now you got a bad perm and you're ugly. The world ain't gonna get another ugly boy with a bad perm. Just go on and jump, son. Okay. And what are you all looking at? Huh? Let me hear the school song. Uh, 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 
Uh, Let me hear the school song now. Uh, we don't have a school song. <laughs> you don't uh, have one? No. Then make one up. Uh, 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 uh. Farewell, Ford. Beauty Academy. You can do better than that. I said, Wilford Beauty Academy. Wilford Beauty Academy. Academy. Beauty yes, indeed. Disgrace what you have done to those children. I can see why they call you Crazy Joe. You are an egotist and a demagogue. Excuse me, children. May I talk to you outside for a Follow moment? Follow me. <laughs> Carry on. Now, how did you take those children? Don't you help! <laughs> she used to call me Crazy Joe. Now she just called me Batman. <laughs> There's been a mistake. You weren't supposed to come to Wilford Beauty School. You were supposed to come to Wilford Central High School. You'll have to go, Joe. But I got so much more to break up. I don't make the rules. Well, I'm sorry, children. I'll no longer be your principal. I've been reassigned. Don't go, Mr. Clark. We need you. We love you, Mr. Clark. Yeah, Joe, don't go. I mean, who's going to give me that extra push I need? <laughs> Boy, you children really are stupid. <laughs> well, maybe I should stick around. Looks like they're going to need somebody to lean on. <laughs> yeah! All righty then. Lean on me. Joe Clark Story Part 2, only on Fox. You know, when I'm spending a relaxing evening at home with my very special lady, I like to treat her to the very best. I wear the finest clothes, serve the finest gourmet foods, and we enjoy the sparkling taste of Bolt 45 malt liquor. There's my lovely now. What'd you expect, Whitney Houston? Would you sure like to slip the plastic loops? Ah, but of course. Splendid. Do you find it acceptable, my flower? As long as you paint, it's fine with me. And excuse me, I am a lady. May I please have a paper bag and a straw? <laughs> you know, Bolt 45 has a fine, rich flavor. A mature, multi bouquet. Bolt 45 also has five times the alcohol content of the average stout beer. So it gets any lady in the mood for what I'm after. Let's get busy, baby. Somehow I knew she wouldn't refuse me. What'd you say, my flower? You like to slip into something more comfortable? She's such a devil. So remember... If you want class, get champagne. But if you want to score, get the powerful taste of both 45. Take it from the living room. Both 45 Mont Liquor, now available in refundable things. the job joints in the world she had to bring a big butt into mine i really loved her you know and why not she's the only woman i ever met that looked as good as me he's looking at you my darling yo stevie play it again
Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, Jesse Jackson. Good evening, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the press, my fellow Americans, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the last press conference of my presidency. Now, few people thought eight years ago that a poor boy from the Carolinas could go from the outhouse to the White House. From eating in cheap joints to talking to joint chiefs. From living on jalapenos to meeting with the Filipinos. Yeah. Hip hop, you don't stop rocking to the bang bang book of the bang. I know that you all have deadlines, so I won't keep you. I'll open the floor to questions. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, as the first black president, did you ever fear an attempt on your life? Oh, my administration did fear assassination, either by strangulation, decapitation, or driving through the South without identification. I took several precautions to ensure my safety. One was to increase the size of the security, and I thank Eddie Murphy for loaning me Big Fruity and Ray. I also, as all of my predecessors have, kept Dan Quayle as a vice president. Next. Uh, Mr. President, what would you say were the most important accomplishments of your eight years in office? Well, my administration was responsible for much, much legislation, though it took a lot of perspiration. But the one act that I feel most proud of is the Jackson Limitation Act. As all of you know, that is the bill that bans all performances by LaToya or Tito Jackson. <laughs> Brother President. Yes, call me Jesse. Do you feel that you have kept all of your promises to the American people? Well, I most certainly have tried and do feel that I have kept the most important promise to the American people, which is to keep hope alive. Would you elaborate on that, please? Oh, yes, I can. May I have your attention, please? As you can see, Bob Hope has been frozen solid. And our scientists believe that he can be kept alive for at least another hundred years. That is all the time I have. So I ask that you will please, one last time, join hands with me and say, Keep hope alive! Keep, Keep hope, hope alive! Good morning, everybody. I'm Hubert. No, I'm I'm Fred. Am I Ron O'Neill? Don Cornelius. Don Cornelius. And my guests today come all the way from Ethiopia. England. England. Ethiopia, England. But before we get to that, let's get to this. A group. Tell them the name of the group. Fine one carnival. Fine young cannibals. That's right, fine young cannibals. But before we get to that, let's get to a groove that's sure enough gonna make you wanna boogie while you woogie, boogie. On the dance floor. On the dance floor, my main man, Fat G. That's heavy D. And the boys. She's so nice. And right now, I'd like you to meet two members of my family. Old trained dancers. Yes, two of the old trained dancers. And you are a young man. Methuselah. And you? Jane Pittman. As you both know, you have 20 seconds to correctly unscramble the name of a very famous talking horse. And I'll give you a hint. It's not Lionel Richie. And while they do that, we'll do this. Yes, and you are? Ask me, Am I? Yes, and you? 
Ah, yes, yes. You all must be very, very proud of your success. Well, we first started out. Will you come back and do another song for us? Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Fine One Mammal. Yes, that's all the time we have for Boogie in today. And I'm Don Corleone. And as usual, it's always in parting that we wish you love, peace, and... television show, Ms. Marsha Warfield. Hi. I'm Marsha Warfield. You know, Kenan asked me to come host a show for him tonight. And the first thing I'm going to do is change the way they do things around here. I'm going to get rid of these little tired tramps. Oh, they gone already. Good. Good. Because all five of them together, it don't even add up to one of my cheeks, so. But I do want to keep Mr. DJ. Mm-hmm. Come on down here, Mr. DJ. Oh, yes, you. Come on down here, doll. We don't have all day. That's SW1. Come here. Unbutton that shirt. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me, let me give you a little help. Come here. You got it? Mm. Isn't he something? Mm. Let, let, me, let me see you shake your thing. Yeah, I'm going to get five more like him and put them on my show. We'll be right back. Come on, doll. Now, boys and girls, it's time for your favorite storyteller. Hello, sweet baby. Hello, Norman Bay. Would y'all like to hear a story? Yeah. Then shut up. <laughs> In a way, tonight's story is Cinderella. Cinderella was the prettiest, most beautiful, and most talented one in the family. And all of them hated her. Just like me. So beautiful and so talented. And they all hate me, you know. Oh, that's right. Cinderella wanted to meet the prince. Now everybody's talking about prince, prince, prince. Let me tell you something about prince. Prince is nothing compared to me. That's right. Prince could not sit next to me on my throne unless he's in a high chair. Oh, that's right. I've seen him, that little tiny man, posing naked on a horse. Trying to cover up with one hand. If I had to cover up one hand, why bother? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so anyway, Cinderella heard about the king's ball and she got all excited, just like I did. I love a good ball. <laughs> anyway, kings are always known for having great balls. And I ain't talking about Elvis. Oh no, Elvis was no king, I'm sorry. Elvis couldn't even tie my blue suede shoes. I wouldn't let him pet my hound dog. Oh no, if Elvis is the king, then what am I? Shut up. <laughs> so anyway, Cinderella was very sad because she couldn't go. And then in the middle of the night, her fairy godmother came and gave her beautiful gown, silver slippers, and a white carriage with horses. You know, they never gave me nothing. That's right. I haven't got a Grammy yet. They never gave me nothing. They gave Paul McCartney a Grammy. When I heard that, I screamed like a white lady in church. <laughs> Where was I? You know, everybody stole from it. Oh, that's right. I can't tell you the story no more. I have to tell you the real story. That's right. Everyone stole from me. Stephen Wonder and Ray Charles, I was blind first. Oh, yeah. I'll be back first. Oh, Diana Ross, 
Got a lost, tall, glamorous woman? You know who did that first. <laughs> oh, and James Brown stole my hair, stole my cape. Mm -hmm. He's in prison right where he belongs. Oh, yes, he is. And you know, Papa's got a brand new bag now. Mm -hmm. Probably got some shoes to match. <laughs> Shut up. Anyway, that's all the time we have for Little Richard's Playhouse. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye, sweet baby. <laughs> Some kids only imagine having a man to spend time with them. Each year, hundreds of thousands of boys are left without fathers, which leaves thousands of mothers with a gap impossible to fill. Hey, kid, how'd you like to learn to throw a real Major League curveball? Wow, that'd be great. Hey, Mom, a big brother's here. Then you can take me to the circus and to the zoo, and you can come to school with me for parents' night. And when all those kids try to beat me up and stuff, I can say, hey, you better watch out, because I have a big brother, and he really cares about me and not... Go buy yourself something, kid. <laughs> Hundreds of kids and their mothers are waiting, and their need is real. So if you've got the right stuff to make a big difference, call Bigger Brothers now. special report. The Billy D. Williams look-alike bandit has escaped. Do not repeat. Do not let anyone into your home who looks like Billy D. Williams. We now return to your regularly scheduled program. I can't believe it. Totally dissed on my birthday. Oh, now, honey. That's what cheap penny pension Cuban type was. <laughs> Well, do you want my arm to fall off? Oh, my goodness. How do you do, I'm Ethel Mertz. Charmed to meet you. Well, Ethel, I wish you could stay, but sorry you got to go see that doctor. Oh, I don't have to go to my doctor. You do now. So, did Vicky send you to surprise me? Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Richie sent me here to surprise you. Ooh, ooh, well, Billy, you got to see my Diana Ross act. I do all the great scenes for Mahogany and stuff. Be honest, Fajita. <laughs> That's Laquita. All right, so you sit back, take a chill pill, kick off your shoes, relax. I'm going to go get ready, okay? All right. Take your time, Laguna. Pleasure meeting you, Laquita. But we already met. I would have remembered meeting someone like you, as someone as charming as you. That's true. Uh, now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to uh, clean up a little bit. Oh, right through here, Billy. Yeah. Just use anything you like. Thank you. Billy! Billy! How'd you get there? Uh, the bottom, he let me in. I told you to relax. Right, Here, right. take your coat off. Sure, sure. Okay? Yeah. Good. Look, Rita, can I talk to you in the kitchen? Now? Hello? What happened to everybody? <laughs> Have we, we met? met? You look, look familiar. familiar. Who are, are you? you? <laughs> Billy D. Williams. Hi, hi, hi. I am confused. Uh, uh, that's him. That's him. That's the clown that's been impersonating me and ripping people off. Oh, are you going to believe this clown? Look at him. He doesn't have any class. Class? 
Buddy, you wouldn't look class if it walked up and bit you on the behind. Freeze! Everybody! All right, we got the bandit corner. Yes, yeah, Sarge, but which one's the imposter? Wait a minute! I know who the imposter is! Ow! Because if anybody know Billy D, it's me! All right, you, step up! Step up! I'm calling you out! All right, now. This is the scene for Mahogany. It's snowing, you making a speech, and Diana Ross is hiding in the crowd. Now go. Madam, would you be willing to put your imagination to work on behalf of the cause that your man's fighting for? Yes! Madam, will you love and cherish him for the rest of his life? Yes! If you're willing to do all of that, then I guarantee that you'll get your man back. <laughs> Just who your criminal is. This is him. All right, Foster, you're going with us. Oh, wait, wait, hold, hold your horses, gentlemen. Uh, the queen is forgetting the end of that scene. Is that so? Kiss me too? Kiss you? I sooner kiss my own brother. I know why you're ignoring me. It's because I'm just little Marshall Warfield. But you see, Todd. I'm drinking milk. <laughs> and when you drink milk, it helps to build your bones and make your body stronger. That way, I won't always be little Marsha Warfield. In fact, if I keep drinking milk... One day, I'm gonna be big Marsha Warfield. You understand what I'm saying, sucker? As a matter of fact, I think when I am, I'm just gonna kick the living crap out of you. Come over here, baby. you... Get off that ignoring me all these years, huh, you little punk? You know how sexy I am? Milk. It does a body real good. Is the prosecution ready to cross-examine? Who is the prosecutor in this case? Uh, Your Honor, that would be... Arsenio! Yes, Your Honor. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get to the bottom of things. Did you see what I did to Vanilla Ice? That's what I do. I get to the bottom of things. Now, with no further ado, I'd like to bring on my first witness. He's a very talented man. He's assaulted 57 women and then showed an indifference for human life and property. So please, give a big round of applause to Mr. Roland B. Give it up! Let's get right into it, Roland. Now your picture is up all over the post office. You're on the FBI's top ten list. Two years in a row. What the court would like to know is, has celebrity life changed you? <laughs> Why 
What? What was it like before all the fame? Well, I was locked in the closet most of my life. Uh, I was abused as a child. One time my mother uh, held me underwater for about four and a half minutes. My father used to use me as an ashtray! Oh, nothing. Just a little joke. Me and Whitney shared about Eddie Murphy. Uh, Objection! What is this, Your Honor? Sustain, Mr. Hall. Now, I haven't read the deposition, but my people tell me that you used Exhibit A to assault all 57 of your victims. Well, the jury, please note, Exhibit A is a heavy, blunt instrument. Do you work out, man? Because this ain't no sissy murder weapon. This here is one bad man with jam. Look like one of them brontosaurus ribs from the front stones. Now, why did Fred always put the ribs in the back of the car when he knew it was going to tip over? Wilma! Wilma! Your Honor, that is immaterial. Mr. Hall, unless there is someone else you would like to call to the stand, I suggest you wrap this up. Very well, Your Honor, fair enough. A surprise guest tonight. Mr. Eddie Murphy, come on now, Eddie! I fail to see how this relates. Oh, it doesn't, John. It's just that it's sweet, sweet, and it would be nice to have Eddie in the car. <laughs> nah. You know, me and Eddie are best friends, and we made a pact before we got famous. Never let a woman come between us. And you are one fine, bad man, my gentleman. Mr. Prosecutor. I pour barbecue sauce all over you and work you like a rib. Mr. Prosecutor. Make your closing statements before I find you in contempt. Very well. Will the jury please note, she is fine. Yes, if Eddie was here, he'd steal for himself. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes. <laughs> now... You've heard some very compelling arguments tonight on both sides of the issue. Compelling, that's a very big word. I know a lot of brothers sitting there going, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> anyway, a man's life hangs in the balance. With that in mind, have you ever noticed how white people sit in a jury, very attentive, sitting there going, I wonder if he's guilty or innocent. I wish he'd hurry up, I have a job to go to. Brothers be sitting there going, say, man, they paying me twelve dollars eighty five cents plus gas. I'm staying all day. Maybe he is. Maybe he ain't. They're not jokes, folks. Just a little something to make you say. Hmm. And on that, the prosecution rests. This has been a total travesty of justice. Ah, oh, she is fine. Let's not forget to give a big round of applause to the main man of the night himself. Come on, I want you to give it up like you got a boiled egg and a glass of water in your stomach loud. Mr. Roland Biggs, come on, give it up, Roland. Yeah. Oh, Roland. Oh, Has the jury reached a decision? Uh, yes, we have, Your Honor. And although we personally find Mr. Biggs here guilty beyond any shadow of a doubt, there was no evidence presented in this courtroom of that nature. And so therefore we, uh, the jury, find the defendant not guilty. Oh! Proud to be number one, Roland. Yes, no, sir. I want my man, the king of funk, to take us home with some of that nasty old leftover lit in your belly button, didn't check between your toes, funk. Kick. Christmas. It's Rick James at his super freakiest, super creepiest ever in Misery 2. It's been
been a lot of fun, Mr. James, but uh, it's getting late, and seeing as the party's been over for a couple of days, don't you think I could leave? Ah, but I got a new party happening, baby, and it's in my pants. No. Don't you want to be there? No, oh. no, really, you're too kind, but I should be going. What? What's the matter? Oh, oh poo. Goodness gracious, look what you made me do. Hello, a Betsy. What a dirty mess. I'm such a dirty birdie, dirty birdie. Please, Mr. James, untie me. I want to go now. I can't believe this. That's all I've done for you. Cooking, cleaning. Let you suck face with my girlfriend when I watch. And this is all the thanks I get. Ew, Mr. James, the ropes are too tight. Ew, my hands are falling asleep. Ah, oh, I need a band-aid. Oh, Mr. James, please. No more night tricks. Oh, who you think you're talking to, your new way freight? Uh, did I ever tell you what a really big fan of your music I am? Bigger than Tina Marie? Oh, yes, much, much bigger. You know, I just love what MC Hammer did with your super freak. MC Hammer? Did you say MC Hammer? MC Hammer and nothing but a big, stinky pants do it. And nothing but a dinky. A farmer new who. A cock a dinky. I hate MC Hammer. You love MC Hammer? Well, why don't you just marry MC Hammer, Mrs. Woman? Let me tell you something else, smell of bottoms. I know something you don't know. MC Hammer got cooties. Now, I don't think I need to be around you for a while. He's a very fucked up host. Hi, I'm the Reverend Jesse Jackson. As children, many of us learned to read through the collection of Dr. Seuss books. Stories like The Cat in the Hat, Horton Hears a Who, Hop on Pop, Green Eggs and Ham, and How the Grinch Stole Christmas. They were all fine for little white children. But the young black inner city child has never had a book upon which he could look and find someone of his kind. La da dee, la da da, la da dee, la da da. <laughs> that is why I'm offering these Jesse Jackson's children's books. For just $49.95, you will get stories from the street. Stories like Horton Hears a Hole. <laughs> I know there's a hole who's down there. And what's more, I'm sure there's two, or three, or even four. A whole family of hoes that hold to survive. Don't be like a hoe, keep hope alive. <laughs> Your children will have hours of fun as they learn important stories about life. Other books in the collection are The Crackhead and the Hat, <laughs> The Grinch Who Stole My Stereo, <laughs> Hot on Cop, and my personal favorite, green eggs and the government cheese. <laughs> I will not eat green eggs and government cheese. I will not eat it because it makes me wheeze. I will not eat green eggs and government cheese because it keeps me from going to the toilet with these. <laughs> to order Jesse Jackson's children's books, send $49.95 to Horton Hughes a Hub. P.O. Box 479999, Chicago, Illinois 60201. Order now. Well, I guess it all started because my dad used to keep pot in the house. Sneak into the bathroom, smoke a few. I was nine years old. I guess I just did it to be cool. Know what I mean? Hey, man, you nodding off. Hey, snap out of it. I'm trying to talk to you about smoking pot. Oh, young lady, you don't want to do that. You want to say no to the drugs. 
that's why he called us here today, to talk about our experiences. Like this one time I was smoking a, a roach. Mm, that's really cruel. Why not just turn the lights on and yell, RAID! They always scatter. No, you see, I was holding the roach with my clip. Oh, she brought a clip. Sandy, kick it. No, what I'm saying is, I was nine years old and I was already doing reefer. Just like Clarence Thomas. You know, he did it at a young age, and look at him today. I think we got a superstar on the rise, and Sandra Day O'Connor, watch yourself. Yes. So anyway, I'm getting stoned in my room all the time, skipping school, selling my parents' stuff just so I can buy more. You ever watch somebody roll a joint? You really don't want none. First of all, it looks like they're pouring some dirt in the toilet paper, then they lick it with the big-ass lips. <laughs> Then hand it to you. No, thank you. Just spit on me. Let me ask you something. Did you ever get to the hard stuff? No, no, just the small stuff. Oh, strive to be number one. Let's give a big coat book a round of applause to a niece. Yes. Come back when you're doing crack. Give it up. Yeah. Now, I haven't read the book. But my people tell me this next juvenile delinquent is giving Danny Bonaduce a big run for his money. <laughs> Yes, he's gone beyond the transvestite. Ethan, tell us all about it. I was 12 years old and it all started with weed. Mmm, I love that movie, Ethan. Yes, Nick Nolte is one of my favorite stars. Did you see him in 48 Hours 1 and 2? He and Eddie are magic. Not as much as me and Eddie. Oh, I love Nick Nolte. I don't think you understand. I was smoking weed. Let me ask you something. Why do people do pot? All it does is make you laugh at everything. When you finish, you're tired. Feel stupid about doing it. Kind of like watching my show. <laughs> Let me ask you something, Ethan. You're a young man. You're smoking weed. Well, you're 12 years old. Doing things that kids do. You ever find yourself just freaking out? Thinking maybe Super Mario is coming to get you? <laughs> Pac-Man's trying to eat you? Oh, oh, Pac-Man's me! Pac Well, how about you, young lady? Now you're on top of the missing person charts, turning tricks for cigarettes, prostitution. At your age, you ever ask yourself, what's next? Feel like you're getting blasé? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just waiting for my mom. Oh, and I bet she's one bad mama jammer. If she looks anything like you, I'm sending Paul Abdul back to the fat farm. Yes! Does your mom turn tricks? I know. Bad host. Bad host. Let's bring it back around to my man, Ethan. When did you stop to say no? Well, I guess it was when I just looked at my life and I said, geez, you know. I was living in a bus depot. I washed my clothes in a sewer. It smelled like it, too. It's so funny. <laughs> Nothing, just thinking about my new haircut. Looks like Gumby with a jerry curl. Oh. Let, me, let me ask a question to all of us. You ever do anything illegal? Yeah. Well, let's say hello to my mystery guest tonight. LAPD in the house. Yes. A very valuable lesson, Ethan. If someone ever asks you to do anything illegal, just say no. Remember that. Just say no. Strive to be number one. Look out for Bubba. He likes young white guys. Yeah, boy. Take it home with some of that crack pipe overdose laying in the alley. In your The king of late night is hanging it up, so make way for the new contender to the throne. Welcome to Late Night with my starring Mike Tyson, along with the world's most buck to the terrific man, the Space Brothers. Now, here's a man who's always given 100% no matter what he's done. Let's give a big hamburgeristic applaud for Iron Man! Tonight I'm ecstatic. <laughs> oh, what's going on in the news? You hear about the boxer 
running around molesting all the beauty contestants? Who does he think he is? A Supreme Court judge? <laughs> <laughs> Who's up for the fraternity suit? Any kid looks nothing like him. He's short, ugly, lines in his hair, gold teeth. Hey, hey who writing this stuff? <laughs> hey, is he, is this funny looking? Hey, I better introduce my party before I hurt somebody. You know these people over there? These are the people who have to stand by idly while I tongue kiss their girlfriends and mothers. <laughs> Not jokes. These are just things that make you say, Robin, you bitch. <laughs> oh, we got a great show. We got a great show. A lot of fun guests tonight. So let's get started. Sphinx Brothers, take us home, Michael, with some of that. I got hit once and laid down and collected check funk like a coward you are. <laughs> Also get to enjoy Michael's own special comedy bits. Please welcome the fabulistic Correct the Magnificent. <laughs> Correct, I hold in my hand an envelope that has been Panasonically sealed in a mayonnaise jar on Jerry Cooney's porch since noon today. But you, in your unconrivable way, will ascertain the answer to the questions without even seeing it. That is correct, Larry Holmes, jockstrap friend. <laughs> Fee-fi, fee-fi, fee-fi fo. Fee-fi, fee-fi, fee-fi fo. <laughs> what is my telephone number? <laughs> Late Night with Mike is also informative. Well, let's get to the top five, shall we? Right. Now, these are the top five questions that people ask me the most. Number five, would you please step out the car, sir? <laughs> Number four, you want to take your hands off my ass? <laughs> Number three, want to defend it, please, boy? <laughs> Number two, you want to take your hands off my ass? <laughs> and the number one question that people always ask you most is... Did you do the voice with Tweety Mike? <laughs> Plus, you'll get to hear some great conversation with guest stars like Sinbad. Don't ever tell a woman she got a big butt, man. My wife got a big butt, man. And she asked me, Sinbad, is my butt big? I said, no, baby, your butt ain't big. But big as New Jersey, man. You can show the 70 millimeter version of Corvallis on the booty, man. And when women got big booty, they eat less. But the booty still big. They eat less. About. I mean, where are your jokes at? I, I like women with big butt. What's wrong with a big butt? You, you're not making any sense. You, you know, you're making me sick. Just get off my show. Oh, get out of here. Oh, you nice You'll also see another side of Mike when he's joined by Joan Embry from the San Diego Zoo. <laughs> this is the rare South American talking cockatoo, the last of its breed. Oh, are you doing, cute little birdie? Ah, Polly want a cracker. Ah, Polly want a cracker. Polly want what? He, he always wants something. He always wants something. We haven't even slept together yet. You want something. I don't even have a nice butt. Get off my show. Late Night with Mike. Brought to you by Brozac. The sedative of Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Shows a Dolman child. <laughs> you know, I should buy my movie house. This is next show, Harlem Nights nice too. Right, Fruity? <laughs> you damn thing. <laughs> oh! Oh! Look, I know the movie's for me, but this guy's laughing. Oh! Hey, this guy's laughing so loud I can't hear myself laugh. Oh! Hey, man. You wanna keep me down? Oh! Hey, look. Hey, man, that's it. Oh! Yo, man. Oh! Hey, man. Yo, man, what's up? Why you laughing like a jackass? Eddie, if the shoe fits wet, 
Oh, my main man, Eddie Sitch, you leather clad, wanna be a rock star, hunk of burning butt on down next to me. It'll be just like old times, Eddie. <laughs> hey, look, what, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm surprised you don't remember me, Eddie. It was four long years ago that you sentenced me to my own show when you knew I wanted to be a movie star, Eddie. Didn't you see Amazon women on the movie? Let me refresh your memory. Oh! I should have won an Oscar for that one, Eddie. Now, Byron Allen is doing funnier sketches than me. Kadeem Hardison's out of town. And I got the meals and breathing down my back. So I'm afraid you're gonna have to give it to someone that be my best friend. Wanna hang out with me all night? Bring the magic back to the show. Look, I, I wanted to do more cameos, but you was always around me. I mean, I needed some breathing room. I mean, I'm sorry for what happened to you a long time ago, but that was a long time ago, all right? I'm sorry, all right? Oh, you don't know long time, Eddie. You have no concept of time at all. You've never had to interview Ed Asner. And Payne, have you ever tried kissing Diana Ross? The hair moves while you're reaching for the lips, Eddie. Besides that, I've seen the old bitch and Paul F. Dew before the nose job. Now that's Payne. Oh, look, man, you buggy, man. I'm out of here. <laughs> Vengeance is mine! Tell me, my people. Eddie. Eddie, let me make myself very clear. I get into 20 million homes a night. I can get into yours. I want your career, Eddie. Your career. Except for the last three music videos you've done. Now, let's see if he's still outside. Eddie, you've been a bad boy. Now, my people tell me you have a restraining order against me, and that is legally binding. But don't feel bad, Eddie. I could be Art Buckwall. Yes, we're going to party all the time. Party all the time. That's it. I'm calling the police. Hello, yeah, this is Eddie Murphy. I'd like to report a crime. Huh? <laughs> okay, just once. <laughs> what? Oh, all right, now, I would like to talk to you about some of the things that you've been saying on the show. Now, can I get some service? <laughs> okay, I'd like to report to somebody. He's... he's... It's funny, he's gone. Never mind. Boy, I'm thirsty. Consuela, can I get some Avion or something? <laughs> All right, let's go, man. Let's do this. Oh, Eddie, go. don't you hate when your mouth get all dry and you get that white and stuff all up in here? Had that crust running on the side. People be looking at you going, damn, was that Eddie Murphy or Cecily Tyson? <laughs> Here's your water. Eddie, don't be frightened. I'm just here to do whatever it takes to have you come and do one, just one guest spot on this show. I'll clean the house, I'll shine your table. Hey, let me update your suit. Take the bells out for you. Look, that's it. I'm calling Joe Piscopo and he's gonna come up here, he's gonna bust your ass. Well, right? you know, just Joe, Joe head. could use the work. Yes, the steroids definitely affected his career. Oh. Yo, what seems to be the problem now? I don't know, my man, she seems to be stuck. Look, just gun it, all right? You can run, but you can't hide, Eddie. You can't hide. Yeah, just going to party all the time, party all the time. Cape Rear 2, our people tell us it's coming soon to a theater near you.